Hi everyone. For today's topic, let us have government intervention in market prices. Price floor. At the end of the lesson, the learners should be able to understand the price floor, apply the price floor in the real world scenario, and analyze the consequences of the government in setting a price floor. Before we proceed to our discussion, let us try to answer the following questions. 1. It refers to the legal minimum prices set for specified goods and services. A. Price controls. B. Price floor. C. Price ceiling. D. None of the above. The answer is B. Price floor. 2. It is a common example of a price floor. A. Minimum wage. B. Sale and promotion. C. Discounts. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Minimum wage. 3. A price floor is necessary to implement during this market condition. A. Equilibrium. B. Shortage. C. Surplus. D. None of the above. The answer is C. Surplus. 4. This is where the price floor located in the graph. A. Above equilibrium point. B. Below equilibrium point. C. Parallel to the equilibrium point. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Above equilibrium point. 5. This happens when the price is allowed to increase. A. Surplus. B. Equilibrium. C. Shortage. D. None of the above. The answer is A. Surplus. Let us check if you still remember our lesson last time. Discuss the price ceiling as a government policy. 1. What is the price ceiling? 2. What is the effect of the price ceiling? 3. What is the purpose of the price ceiling? 4. What commodities should be imposed in the price ceiling?
Last time we discussed one of the price controls concerning the maximum price that the government imposed on commodities, price ceiling. In this module, we will discuss another price control which is the opposite of the price ceiling. A price floor is the lowest legal price in which a commodity can be sold. Price floors are used by the government to prevent prices from being too low. If it's not above equilibrium, then the market won't sell below equilibrium and the price floor will be irrelevant. To make the discussion clearer, let us use the market demand and supply of sandwiches. Figure 1 shows that the market demand and supply of sandwiches with an equilibrium price of 20 pesos. Let's say the government imposed a price floor in snacks and related products at 25 pesos, hence it is illegal to put lower prices below 25 pesos. With a price floor of 25 pesos, the quantity demanded decreases from 60 to 40 sandwiches while quantity supplied increases from 60 to 80 sandwiches. What will happen eventually? This will cause a temporary surplus of 40 sandwiches 80 minus 40, since the suppliers are encouraged to produce more sandwiches. In this scenario, we have applied the demand and supply model to the product market. However, the most common price floor is the minimum wage, the minimum price that a worker receives. Hence, we will apply the model to the labor market. The price is the price of labor which is the wage, and the quantity is the number of workers. In the Philippines, we have specific minimum wage rates in different regions, areas, and sectors. According to the National Wages and Productivity Commission, the highest daily wage rate per day is the national capital region with a minimum wage rate ranging from 500 pesos to 537 pesos. It is illegal to pay the employees below the prescribed minimum wage rate. Most high-skilled and experienced workers earn wages that are higher than minimum. Their employment opportunities are not much affected by the minimum wage rate policy. Unlike high-skilled workers, low-skilled and inexperienced workers whose market-determined wages are lower than the minimum wage will be affected. The price floors are sometimes called price supports, because they support the price by preventing it from falling below a certain level. Figure 2 illustrates the effect of minimum wage on the market for unskilled workers. Take note that on the demand side, this pertains to the number of workers that the businesses or employers want to hire at various wage rates. Ceteris paribus, as a wage rate decreases, the quantity demanded for workers increases, vice versa. While on the supply of labor, this refers to the number of workers who want to be hired at various wage rates. Law of supply says that, as wage rate increases, the number of workers who are willing to be hired also increases. Suppose the government releases a new policy regarding the minimum wage rate at 600 pesos. Remember that price floor is always set above the equilibrium point. This policy would make low-income workers better off with a high income. At the equilibrium wage, 500 pesos, there are 600 available workers to be employed. Meaning, labor supply and labor demand meet at the equilibrium wage. At the minimum wage rate of 600 pesos, 800 workers are available for hire, but only 400 workers were employed. There are surplus or excess in supply of 400 workers, 800 minus 400. The effects of the minimum wage on the market for unskilled workers are. 1. A decrease in the employment of unskilled workers from 600 to 400, and 2. A surplus of unskilled workers equal to 400, 800 minus 400. With this, employers have more incentives to substitute machines and high-skilled workers for low-skilled workers. For your activity, please read the directions. You may answer this after watching the video. To summarize what you have learned in the lesson, answer the following questions. 1. What is the price floor? 2. What are the effects of the price floor in the market demand and supply? 3. What will happen if the government sets the price floor on the basic commodities?
The more we take the welfare of others to heart and work for their benefit, the more benefit we derive for ourselves. This is a fact that we can see. Dalai Lama. Let us check if you have learned something today. Please answer the post-test.